Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at sending emails. This is a pretty basic piece of functionality in Rails, so it's definitely something you want to be used to. Uh, and today we're just going to be taking a look at how we can send an email to users after a post is created, which is going to involve creating a mailer, figuring out how we want to call it, uh, as well as figuring out how we want to test it. Now for testing, we have covered, I think it was Mailcatcher on the channel before, uh, but for this time, we're just gonna be logging out the emails to the console so we can see them, uh, as well as having a little preview here that we can visit that will just show you the email and allow you to see both the HTML version as well as the plain text version. So this is just sort of what we're doing here. All right, so to get started, we're gonna go ahead and stop our server do a uh, CD and then do a Rails new video and then we'll just go ahead and CD into it and run a code dot. We're going to be using Devise for our user accounts so that we can send emails to all of the other users except for the one that just created a post. So for that we're going to have an incognito window that we're going to have to open in a little bit here. Uh, we're not going to be covering setting up anything like Google or you know any sort of uh, actual email service in this because this is mostly just for testing. Uh, there's plenty of guides out there for like actually doing the production stuff. But okay, a lot of this is based on this Rails Edge Guide with some basics that you can follow. Just be careful because sometimes some of the stuff might not work exactly how I think they expected it to. Uh, but to get started, let's go ahead and let's do a Rails G. Uh, actually, let's do a bundle add for device. I think it makes more sense to just set up the user accounts first so we can just forget about them. We'll add device, then we'll do a Rails G device colon install to install it. And then we can do a Rails G device user to create our user accounts. So now we can just forget about those. Let's go ahead and let's do our Rails G scaffold for a post now with a title and a body of type text. And then let's do a user colon references, references, so that we can have that belongs to relationship that we need on our posts or on our users, sorry. All right, so that works. Now what we want to do is generate our mailer. So we'll say Rails G mailer, oops, not that, Rails G mailer, and then we'll generate a post mailer. So this works just like everything else. It creates a app slash mailer slash post mailer, which is great. It creates a view for us, or at least a view folder. Uh, and then it creates a test for us and uh, a test preview. We'll talk about the previews in a minute here. Uh, but what happens if we do something like this? So we'll de destroy the mailer and then we'll come up here, do a um, new post mailer. And we'll just say this is a new post email or something. We can go ahead and run this. And now what we get is we get the post mailer created again. It creates our views folder, but now it also creates a uh, new post email that is a .txt.erb as well as a .html.erb. So these are your two views. So it's now generating those for us. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at those. We'll come over to our app, our views, our post mailer, and then we'll take a look at each of these. So here we can see the uh, text.erb file just has a greetings that says you can find me here. Come over to the .html. It has essentially the same thing, uh, but in here you can notice you can use some HTML markup. So this is the first thing you wanna be aware of. Uh, people sometimes prefer to get these cringy little plain text emails, in which case uh, you won't be able to send them these HTML emails. So you're gonna to wanna to keep two different versions. Uh, the other thing to be aware of is your links are gonna work a little bit weird here. You probably saw that in the demo, uh, but if we come into like this new text email thing and we do a, uh, let's do a link to, uh, I don't know, the post.first or something and we'll say, uh, see post here, post here, and then something like this. Uh, this, of course, isn't going to work, right? So if we now come into our, uh, what is it? It's going to be our test, our mailers, our previews, and the post mail uh, mailer preview. This allows you to visit this URL to see this uh, email in action. So to actually test it, we have to do a Rails db colon migrate real quick, and then we can do a Rails s. We could also seed the database, but we'll just do it this way instead. We'll come over to slash posts, create a new post, do a test and a case. It's asking for a user here. I'll just create a user of one. Uh, oops, but that won't work because we have to actually create a user account. So let's go ahead and let's sign in. We'll do a uh, slash user slash sign in. We'll go over to sign up, do a dean at example.com with a password of password. Then we can go back over to slash posts. And now we should be good to do a new post with a test and a case. Enter a user of one and that should work. 
Now let's come over to our mailers here. Uh, we can paste into this new tab, localhost port 3000 slash rails slash mailer slash post mailer slash new post email. And here we can see we have a missing link to. Well, the first thing we have to do here is get rid of this link to. So we have to get rid of all of this and just return uh, whatever's in here. If we leave it like this, we can actually refresh and we can see how you can find me in this email. If we come over to our text, because this is in our text version, our plain text version, we can just see the post right here. So we need that URL. So we actually have to do something like a uh, post URL for the post.first. And now if we refresh, we'll run into this error again. But now we can add in the only path and set it to true. Just like that, refresh. And now you can see you get that slash post slash one. So that's where this can also be a little bit weird. Now, if we try something else, we can come in here, we can set like the host parameter, right? So after this, we can say host is localhost port 3000 and Copilot would stop adding those extra marks. Uh, now, if we refresh, we can see this is going to HTTP localhost port 3000 slash post slash one, right? So this is where you gotta be a little bit more creative for these text links. It's a little bit easier, oh, oops, uh, it's a little bit easier over in the link twos over in your uh, .html version, right? So you could do a uh, link to in here and you can just have this link to your uh, post, right? So we'll say show post for the post URL with the host, whatever. If we come over to the HTML, this will work right away just as a regular link. And this will take us to post slash one. So that's totally fine. It's just whenever you have this text over here, you do have to make sure you're actually returning text to the screen, which is a raw link as opposed to a link to, which is of course an A tag. But okay, now how do we create these, uh, or how do we set these up to fire off on create? Well, to do that, we can come into our post controller and in our post controller, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, merge these post params with a user ID for the current user dot ID. And then up here, we'll just set this to have a before action of authenticate user, except for the index and the show. So now whenever you go to create a new post, you'll have to be logged in and then it'll just merge in the user parameters into this post, that's fine. Uh, and then we can come up here in our post controller uh, and we can include a concern because we don't want to like, you know, muddy up this entire controller with our logic. So we'll just do a quick little include for a post notifier. We can come over to our app controllers concerns folder, right click new file and call this post underscore notifier dot RB. And then inside of this post notifier, we can actually set up a quick little thing that'll fire off these emails. So in here, we just extend active support concern. Uh, we can have a included do, and what's nice about this is it allows us to have an after action that'll notify all users, uh, and that will only fire for create. So after you take an action in here, that is only the create action. After you're done with the create action, it will then uh, do a notify users method. Let's go ahead and let's create this notify users method down here. The notify users method will just do a quick check to see if a at post persisted. If the post persisted, we'll just go ahead and do a puts saying sending an email to all users. Next, we can just do a user.where.not the at post.user ID. So wherever the user is not the creator of the post, uh, we will then iterate through each of those users and call the post mailer, which was that mailer we created. If we come over to mailers post mailer, we'll call this one. Uh, we'll do that for each of these users, create a, or call dot new post email, which is a method we have to create, pass in the user and the app post, and then call deliver later, which means it'll run in the background. So in our post mailer, we have to create this new post email. Right now it just has a at greeting equals hi and a mail to, it is example.com or whatever. We probably don't want that because uh, it doesn't really make sense to have this sort of information here. Uh, so instead what we can do is we can take in a user and a post, and then instead of having a greeting or whatever, we can just say, let's have a at user equals the user. We can have a at post equals the post. And then we can do something like a mail where the two is the uh, at user dot email. The subject is something like new post on whatever the post title is. And then, oops, and then you can have a from that is uh, whatever your default from is. Now you can either optionally change this. So you can say like post mailer at special case.com, something like that. Or you can just omit this and you can have a default from somewhere else in your application. It can either be up here where a default from is like notifications at example.com, or you could put this in your like application mailer where your default from is already set to something else and then you could change it. 
In this case, we can just declare it right here, leave this as notifications at example.com, have this mail set up for the to and the subject, uh, and then we're pretty much good to go. So now we have this, let's go ahead and let's test this. We can go back to our post, create a new post, uh, and let's get rid of this user field real quick. We'll come into our app views posts form. In the form, we'll get rid of this user ID because it's driving me nuts. And now we can do a test and a case in here. I'll hit enter in our terminal. We can click create post. Now, funny enough, uh, you might judge me for this, but that's okay. Uh, this took me probably 30 minutes to resolve earlier. I couldn't figure out what was wrong here. There's nothing being sent. It says it's sending an email to all users, but it doesn't send an email. Like I'm not seeing anything. And normally it's supposed to go to the terminal. Well, the reason for that is we only have one user account right now. <laughs> and we're doing that uh, except in our post uh, notifier, right? Where we have this user dot where dot not. So it's, it's excluding the current user's ID because the current user is the author. So let's go ahead and let's create a second user by going over to localhost support 3000 slash users slash sign in over to the sign up page to do a john at doe.com with a password of password. So let's do that. Now we can come over here and we can go back to our post, do a new post, type in test and case. And then down here in our terminal, when we click create post, we can now hit F11 and scroll up. And now in here, you can see a whole bunch of stuff happening. So we come in and we create our posts. After our post is created, we see the sending email to all users, and then it calls this notify users. That enqueues a action mailer delivery job, which is gonna run in the background, and it's going to send out this email. So you can see your post, post mailer with a new post email method, deliver now with your arguments right here that has your uh, user two right here, et cetera, et cetera. So you come down here through all of this mailer stuff, and then down here you can see that you have a from notifications at example.com, just like we said it. Uh, to john at doe.com, which is that device user email, has a subject of new post on test, which was the title of that post. Then there's a whole bunch of information on the email itself, the MIME type, etc., uh, the post and action, or the controller and action right here, uh, and then the find me in the new post email.text.erb file. So this is our uh, text version right here. So if we come back over to our post mailer uh, folder with our views, you can see the uh, text version right here has this greeting, find me in app views dot whatever, and then the link to that location. Then below that, we have this doc type of HTML. This is where you have your uh, new post email. And this is where we set up that manual link where you can see this is actually an A link right here. And if we were to click on this, this would take us to that location. Now, of course, we can also see this if we come over to our uh, mailer right here. Uh, so what we'll do is I'll go ahead and exit out of here. We can come over to, let's say, our test mailers and the, the post mailer preview right here. Uh, when we visit this, oh, there's a couple other things that we can do. We can come in here and say our user is equal to user.first. A post is equal to post.first. Because right now you can see this is just set from at example.com to at example.com. So if we grab these two, we can now pass these in to our post mailer with a user and a post. And now we can come over here and refresh. And now you'll see this is from notifications at example.com to dean at example.com, the first user. You can see there's a new post on test, which is the title of that post. And you get the idea here. If we set this to the last post, for example, let's say this is post.last, we can come over here and let's create a new post. We'll say this is uh, hello world, it's dean or something, I don't know click create post and now we can come over to our mailer refresh and now you can see new post from hello world which is that title and similarly this will still work uh, but the thing that you have to be aware of is here this uh, post link in this dot html dot erb is still set to be the uh, it's still set to be the like first post so instead of the first post you would want to set this now to at post and your greeting here would be uh, I don't know like uh, hello uh, you know, and then we can do at user dot email or something. And you can come over here and refresh and you can see hello at, at example.com. And the show post now takes us to the last post, which is this uh, post that has hello world. So that's effectively how you can set this up. And now anytime a user creates a post, you'll see a email fire off in your terminal, which you can view, or you can of course come over to your test, uh, you know, previewer and just check it out if you want to. But at the end of the day, the nice thing about this is it's always working in the background. So it's kind of silently there. You probably will forget about it, but you know, as long as it's not throwing any errors, you, you know it's probably still working. 
but yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this. I just kind of wanted to cover the very basics here uh, because it's, you know, it's something that can be a little bit weird to wrap your head around. I've covered it before with like the, the action mailer uh, or whatever I covered. I think it was like a mail catcher or letter opener. I covered one of the two, uh, but I figured it'd be better to just, you know, go over the bare basics and see how it works in a Rails app as intended. Uh, and then you can figure out what gem you want to use if you want to preview the emails in your browser or whatever. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.